Is it possible that the Ark of the Covenant was secretly rushed from the first Hebrew temple in Jerusalem, just before the temple's destruction? Treasure hunter Jim Barfield believes the answer is yes. He has decoded an ancient treasure map, hammered into a copper scroll thousands of years old, which lists the supposed locations of the most valuable artifacts from the temple. According to Jim, they can all be found in the ancient city of Qumran. The second location on the Copper Scroll was surprisingly easy to find considering the value of what's buried right here. The Copper Scrolls describe this location like this. In the dry cistern, the great ruined courtyard of the peristyle is hidden polished gold. In front of the uppermost opening are 900 talents. That is 33 tons of polished gold at this location. Armed with a survey of Qumran, Jim was quickly able to locate the town's cistern. I came out here with a member of the Israeli parliament and a very powerful metal detector. And when we got to this spot, the readings were off the charts. I could not believe what I saw. I went home and I buried 30 pounds of silver in my front yard and the readings didn't even come close. But the gold was never Jim's primary target. It's just one more clue that could lead to the greatest prize of all. Location number one, location number two, lined up perfectly with my map. But my ultimate goal is to find location number three which includes the temple vessels and the Ark of the Covenant. The Copper Scroll describes this location as being at the north end of the Hill of Kolit. It couldn't be within the ruins of Qumran because there are no hills there. While Qumran sits on flatland, there are several large hills nearby. Jim studied dozens of satellite images to find one that matched the Copper Scroll's description. It's right here. Not only does this hill feature a hidden cave, it also sits in perfect alignment with the other temple treasures. Take location number one, location number two, and you connect them with a straight line, they will lead directly to this cave that holds Israel's most important treasures, including the Ark of the Covenant. Jeremiah brought the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabernacle of Moses, and buried them inside of a cave and sealed the entrance. When I got to the cave, some of the stones looked different than the rest. It appears that an ancient trowel of some type was used to form this seal. I took a sample of this stone into two different companies. They said it was an ancient man-made mortar, unlike any natural formation. It's clear that whoever sealed this cave went to great lengths to hide its contents. Could those contents include the Ark of the Covenant? After we identified this as the most likely site of the cave, we came back with the high-powered metal detector. When we saw the readings for this location, we knew that this was the mother load. The metal detector readings at the cave are five times higher than the 33 tons of gold at site number two, suggesting an even greater prize could indeed be hidden here. It's obvious that something's here. The Copper Scroll, the map, the mortar, and the readings of the metal detector. All of these leave me with no doubt. In this cave are some of Israel's greatest treasures, including the Ark of the Covenant. If Jim Barfield can get permission to dig at Qumran, there's a chance he might be about to finally unearth the Ark of the Covenant. Looking forward, there's no telling where the hunt for the Ark might go. But looking backward, it all leads to one man, a man who simultaneously held two of the Bible's most famed and mysterious treasures. If he existed, King Solomon was quite possibly the most powerful person to ever live. From his lucrative copper mines in Israel to his massive gold reserves imported from abroad, he controlled the area's trade routes and united his kingdom with another regional superpower. 
he accomplished all of this while in possession of the Ark of the Covenant. But as Solomon reached old age and reflected on his life, he wrote a telling line in the book of Ecclesiastes. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Perhaps the old king had realized that history's ultimate accumulation of wealth and power still wasn't enough to provide fulfillment. It's a lesson that future generations of biblical treasure hunters would be wise to keep in mind. The search continues.